G from Wish Upon a Style. Firstly, I hope you're all having a good day. Now, some of you may have seen that I put a post on Facebook yesterday telling you about a bridal shoot that I've been involved in last August. It was the most fabulous day, an amazing venue, and uh, well, I joined a team of very creative professionals and we put together this wonderful pretend wedding. Um, now, I'm not going to tell you any more than that, um, but it was a great day, but I have written a blog about it and it's now on our website. So I'll leave the link and uh, it'd be lovely if you uh, wanted to look at it. it. I think it makes a very good read. And of course, if you're planning a wedding or you know of anyone who's planning a wedding, then uh, you might get some ideas from that as well. Um, but I also let it slip yesterday that uh, my husband and I happened to be celebrating our wedding anniversary. So thank, oh, thank you, first of all, for all the good wishes that we received. That was lovely. It was a very quiet day. Yeah, I was working. And well, I think we'll probably have to celebrate at the weekend with the family. So that would be really nice. And I received some flowers and chocolates, so that was very nice. And the reason um, that I wanted to come on and talk to you today was that I received uh, a lovely bouquet of uh, lilies from my mum. And they're right here. And they're genuine. Now, um, I kept them in the garage overnight to keep them cool. That's one thing you should always do. Just a couple of tips, actually. If uh, you buy some lilies or you're lucky enough to be given some lilies, uh, so the first thing I always do, once I've got them home, I cut off the stems, about three centimetres, uh, put them in fresh water, in a clean vase, of course, and then uh, nine times out of ten, you're going to get some flower food that will come with them. So put the flower food in, and then every few days, just um, change the water if you can, or at least top it up. And uh, your flowers probably last quite a long time. Now, one important thing I wanted to mention, actually, about lilies, and that is, um, if, you, if you do have pets, if you have dogs and cats, lilies are toxic to pets, um, especially to dogs and cats. And it's actually the pollen. Um, and in fact, I think there's more problems with cats than with dogs. But I have, as some of you know, um, my little Jack Russell Terrier, Kenzo. And so I always make sure that I've got lilies, they are kept well away from him. And um, so that's really, uh, I think, an important point with flowers. You really need to check when you have pets, whether or not um, they're going to be poisonous. So having said that, um, I'm now going to be um, arranging these flowers. Now, um, of course, there's nothing wrong at all with putting them just in a vase, just, you know, arranging them nicely, and that's a lovely thing to do. But if you know me, um, you'll know that that's not what I'm going to do at all. I'm going to try and make some kind of really spectacular arrangement, and I'm not going to uh, spend a lot of money on it either. So um, I'm going to actually put together um, a video a tutorial showing you exactly what I'm going to do with this bouquet of flowers. Um, I'll give you an idea, actually. When I went for a walk yesterday with Kenzo into the forest, I collected some twigs and branches. I've got them here now. Um, so they're not looking terribly attractive at the moment. There we go. Actually, what I've already done um, is to, um, once I've got them home, to clean them thoroughly and dry them. And then I sprayed them. And I sprayed them with uh, here they are, dark chocolate uh, spray paint. Um, and I sprayed them all over with that and then oh actually then I got some black paint and I just painted little bits because although they're real branches and twigs once I painted them all brown and um, they were too uniform in colour and um, you know I want to show that they are real and um, or even if people think they're artificial they're going to think what realistic branches and twigs so I painted little black um, bits on them as well and now you know they're back to their kind of former natural glory so um, that's what I did with those. Now, they're going to look pretty boring and plain um, on their own with these beautiful flowers. So what I'm going to do, I've actually got some very, very inexpensive artificial flowers here. I think they probably cost about £1.50, £2 a stem. And um, what I'm going to do is just, whoops, I've got to, having my twigs escaping there. So what I'm going to do is just remove the little flowers. Um, I've already started doing that. You can see that here. So I've taken some off. And I'm going to stick them actually on the twigs and branches with the aid of my 
hot glue gun. So that's going to be uh, a quite a, a long task, but I'm going to I think I'm going to enjoy that as well. And I'm going to turn these branches into something really pretty. In fact, what I'm going to do uh, is bring winter to spring and make uh, these twigs into kind of apple or cherry blossom twigs and branches. And I think they are going to look lovely with these lilies. In fact, what I've tried to do is to choose colours that I think would actually go with these. So all shades of pink and little bits of white as well. So um, if that's something that interests you and you'd like to see um, the finished result, well, I'll put the, I will put the finished arrangement uh, on Facebook so you will see them. But of course, I'm going to do a complete tutorial and that will be available on uh, my YouTube channel. So I will um, let you know when I've done that, when it's ready, and then perhaps you'll join me on YouTube as well. Now, that's going to be, as I say, a really lovely display. And uh, I'm not going to finish there. I'm going to then enjoy my mum's flowers for a, a while, a few days at least. And then, well, I'm going to uh, take them and incorporate them into a tablescape centerpiece. And I'm really looking forward to that as well. So, so many things I'm going to do with this one bouquet of flowers. So um, I hope you'll join me. And uh, remember, whatever you do, do it with style. the display that I've created using those branches and twigs and uh, the rose lilies and oh there's no reason why you should we all have different styles different tastes and I think it would be a very boring world if we all like the same things but um, you know we all have a particular style and even if we sometimes don't realize it uh, with me I know exactly what my favorite style is it's always something that's going to be pretty and pink lots of flowers candles and I love uh, shabby chic, vintage style, French country, anything to do with uh, France actually, it's uh, probably my most favourite uh, thing. I'm starting my Ladies Who Lunch tablescape by placing a small square antique lace tablecloth on the centre of this table, placed in a diamond shape, and then on top of that I'm putting my pink silk runner along the length of the table. I've created a floral garland 
first by wrapping some green florist tape around a branch and then attaching some artificial flowers. And now I'm going to be wrapping a string of fairy lights around the garland intertwined with pearls. With the lights turned down low and the fairy lights switched on, they will cast a magical glow over the table. This garland will form the middle structure of our centrepiece, but there's a lot to add to it yet. I will be filling this garland with the fresh lily heads and also some dried lavender. My original idea was to place decorative bird cages at either end of the table, but as sometimes happens, I've changed my mind. I remembered these tea light table lamps. Now I've had them for a long time and I'm about to upcycle them. I've already painted the shades and what I'm going to do as soon as I have some time is to decoupage the shades so they're going to be more of a shabby chic style. This is how they looked originally. Very pretty but I thought it was time for a change. Although I occasionally use faux candles, I much prefer to use real candlelight when possible. You know, there's nothing quite like real candlelight for creating that romantic atmosphere and also for creating a flattering glow around the table. Your female guests will definitely thank you. I do like to have candles at varying heights. So here I'm using two pairs of candlesticks that do vary in height to give that effect. And by the way, if you're using new candles, then don't forget to trim the wicks if they're very long. Otherwise the candles might start smoking. I'm getting known for my signature table decor, so you will find sometimes birds or butterflies intertwined with the centerpieces, but I'm now obsessed with pumpkins, especially the munchkin variety. And this is, yes, a real pumpkin that I painted white and added a pearlized effect and, well, it's got pride of place in the middle of that centerpiece. And if you'd like to know how I preserve my pumpkins and apples to use as table decor, then please check out the last video I uploaded. I've chosen this pretty golden white cutlery to use today because the tableware I'm going to be using is predominantly white and you'll see that in just a moment. But first I'm placing this very pretty tea set on the table. It consists of teacup, saucer and cake plate. It matches the colour schemes that I've chosen today perfectly. Although I prefer using linen or silk napkins, I've managed to find these serviettes that were actually designed to go with the tea set I'm using today. And so that's what I'll be using for this particular tablescape. And I thought I might share one of my very simple and very quick napkin folds with you. Firstly, Place the napkin on the table with the white side or wrong side facing upwards and what you're going to do is simply pleat the napkin. So start with one pleat. I'm using a dinner napkin here and so I'm making the pleats about one inch wide but you know if you're using cocktail napkins you might want to perhaps do a narrower pleat and all you're going to be doing is pleating right up to the top uh, and you do one pleat and then you turn the napkin over to do the other pleat then turn it back to do the next pleat and just continue this until you reach the top. It couldn't be simpler and just takes a few seconds to do each one. And if you've children around that would like to help, well, I'm sure that they would make a really good job of it too. And so once you've uh, reached the top, all you need to do is place a forefinger in the middle of the 
serviette and then bring both sides up as you can see here give it a good press and there you have it my ladies fan napkin fold and then you can just place them in a cup or a wine glass or even a champagne flute I'm using my flower shaped white tableware today ideal for afternoon teas because you can place finger sandwiches around the petals and then small cakes or pastries in the middle Today I'm actually putting a soup tureen there, and you'll see why in a moment. I'm placing one of the fresh lilies in each tureen, and I'm going to be adding a, a lily leaf. I'm also going to be adding a small bunch of dried lavender. Now I visit the lavender fields in England each summer, and then once I pick them, I dried them and I use them throughout the year. I do wish you could smell the fragrance permeating this room at the moment. The lavender evokes a feeling of well-being and of course the lilies give off this feminine floral fragrance. Perfect for ladies who lunch. an afternoon tea with my mum, my daughter and my cousin. They're coming over later and we're going to have a lovely afternoon. It's going to be very informal and you might think, well, if it's informal, why have you got all this trouble? You know, this is a separate table and the uh, honest answer is it's my passion. It's what I love doing. It's why um, I started Wish Upon a Star, why I be became a tablescape uh, stylist and why we provide uh, a higher setup and style service. So if you didn't want to go through all the trouble of doing all this yourself, perhaps you're too busy, um, or maybe you just haven't really got the tableware and the glassware and the silverware and all the decor that you would really like to use. That's why um, we can bring it to you. But um, on the other hand, you know, it's a wonderful hobby. Uh, tablescaping is so popular in other countries in Europe, and also especially in the States. Uh, it's not so popular here for some reason, but I would like to change that. Um, I really do want to encourage people to entertain more at home. But I honestly believe that the best memories are made when you are gathered around a table with your family and friends. And what better way is there to show them how special they are, how much they mean to you, than by going to a little bit of time and effort and uh, you know, setting the table for them and, and just making them feel that you've gone through all this trouble for them. But if this is something that uh, you really would like to do yourself, then I would be more than delighted. And with that in mind, I'm really excited that in the new year, what I'm going to be doing is producing, first of all, a series of eBooks where I can show you from A to Z um, how to create a beautiful tablescape. There will be other things in there as well, hints and tips on recipes and things to serve for different occasions. Uh, so that's one thing. Um, I'm also thinking of doing some online tutorials and I'm looking forward to that as well. And that will be very interactive. I think we'll probably do this somehow via Zoom so that um, you know we can actually see what we're all doing together. So that's another idea. But if you're someone that really doesn't like Zoom, doesn't like ebooks, doesn't like online workshops, then I have another idea and that is uh, why not invite family or friends to your home, perhaps for an afternoon tea or you know wine with candles or something, and you can come over and we can show you all how to create a beautiful tablescape. We can do it all together, and um, that might be another idea as well, just something a bit different. So something to think about. If you're interested in anything I said uh, today, then please um, just put a message in the comments, send me a private message, or even better, join our email list because um, we're going to be sending emails out in the new year to give details of all these events that we're going to be doing. And if you're on the email list, then of course you'll be the first to hear about it. So that's really what I wanted to say today, except um, whatever you do, do it with style.
Treffen wir uns. Und wir schicken uns dann auch.